Reptiles are really cool, and it turns out some of the coolest ones are wildly illegal. So today let's go over the top five most illegal reptiles in the entire world. My name's Adam, this is Kratos. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Now, if you are part of the reptile community, especially in the US, you probably know that Burmese pythons are illegal in places like Florida, but Burmese pythons aren't even gonna make the list. However, number five, I do have also, and they're in a quarantine period and I just really wanna show them off, which is why we're doing this video anyway. So let's just start it off with number five, reticulated pythons. So this is not a retech, okay? Berms and retechs are very similar animals, but they're definitely not the same. So the reason I'm using a berm here instead of a retech is because berms, well, I have a few of them that are not in quarantine. Reticulated pythons, I have five of them now. This is a whole thing. I was very lucky to get them from Snake Cake Exotics. Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate you letting me have your babies, but but uh, that sounded like not what I meant it to sound like. So I can't have uh, those animals in this room, but the reason that I put retics instead of berms is because retics get a little bit longer. So the reason I picked retics instead of berms, although berms are more well known, is because retics deserve some love too. And reticulated pythons are actually the largest snake in the world in terms of overall length. So they're a bit longer than Burmese pythons, unless you get super dwarves. And here's my gripe, because super dwarf reticulated pythons and full-size mainland reticulated pythons which are the largest ones in the world, are technically the same species. They're not speciated. And what that means is if in your area, a retech that is a full-size mainland retech is gonna be uh, out of question because of laws, that means that these super dwarf varieties, which sometimes only get to five or six feet, are also gonna be illegal. Now I get it because it is, in my own practice, I only handle animals, snakes that are larger than 10 feet if there's someone else in the room because it, uh, if they, for whatever reason, thought you were food, if they got some inclination that maybe it was food time and you were the food item, even if they really can't swallow you because these animals don't prey on humans. I mean, Retex mainlands sometimes do in their native Indonesia, but this is very, very rare. This is like wildly, wildly rare. And Burmese pythons have never been known to actually consume a human, as I jinx myself, not today. Kratos, not today, I'm too big for you. So, an animal that is big enough to actually kill you if they wanted to because they mistook you for food is something that maybe you should have some help with if you're going to handle. So, if I am subscribing as someone who is experienced with these animals, that you should have help when you're handling them or shouldn't handle them alone, well then that would tell you that maybe common sense dictates you shouldn't either. And maybe an animal that could possibly kill you shouldn't be illegal for you to own, right? Well, if that's the case, then why are large breed dogs legal? Because guess what? A Cane Corso or a Pit Bull or several massive species could easily kill you or your children, but those are perfectly legal for you to keep. So why is it that these animals are not? And if you look at the deaths via dog versus deaths via snake, what do you see? you see that there are way more people dying of attacks or defensive strikes or whatever you want to call it from dogs than snakes. So what the heck are we doing? Silly goosery, that's what we're doing because we just ban stuff, right? And I'm not for banning pit bulls, by the way. I live in Ontario, Canada. We still have a ban from 2005. We're talking 18 years ago. It's stupid, it's ridiculous. We need to get rid of it, but so are these bans on reticulated pythons. And I think that that is just silly goose stuff too. Not only that, but we need to speciate these animals because having the same laws for an animal that's gonna get to 20 feet as you do for an animal that gets to six feet or eight feet is stupid. It doesn't make sense. A super dwarf reticulated python is never gonna be able to kill a human, period. There is no realistic way in this world that a super dwarf reticulated python is going to be able to kill you, period. That's it, that's all. No, stop, we need to stop doing these stupid laws. Okay, something a little bit more manageable. Uh, diamond is not illegal anywhere, but <sighs> number four. Where are we here? Fiji banded iguanas. And I actually do have one of these and I'll tell you what I can have them and you probably can't, but he's uh, back there cause he's kind of squirmy and difficult to film with. So the reason that Fiji banded iguanas are on the list at number four is because if you live in the US, which is where the most of the people who watch these videos are from, you can't have them. All the ones in the US are illegal, except for the ones in zoos. So all private collections are illegal. You can't import them. You can't buy them legally, period. 
Fiji banded iguanas are a smaller, much more beautiful, much easier to care for green iguana from the Fiji archipelago. Mine is technically a Tonga banded iguana, not a Fiji banded iguana, same sort of thing. These are amazing animals. They're herbivores, although they do eat crickets, I found out, because a cricket ended up in Frankie's enclosure by accident and uh, he gobbled it up like he's never seen food before. So anyway, these guys are really great. I, I love my Fiji banded iguana. I'm trying to tame him down enough where he can just sit here like diamond. But if I have him out, he's moving and grooving. He's trying to jump on the racks and the whole thing. So he's not the best animal to film with. Like I'm trying to say things coherently. However, he is good to handle. He's just gonna be moving quite a bit more. And if you're in a place like Canada, where I am, which is why I'm allowed to have these guys, they do make fantastic pets. It's just that they are illegal in the US and several other places too, because of a CITES restriction, which means when that CITES restriction went into place, if the animals aren't in that country, there's no way to legally bring them in. And although it always is the fact that people do poach and bring them in illegally, which I condemn, I do not do this. Do not do this. Don't take animals that are endangered out of the wild. I'm telling you not to. However, it does happen. People do that. There is money to be gained. Those animals oftentimes are found, seized, and put in zoos. So you cannot have Fiji banana bonus. Sorry. Well, unless you live in Europe too, because Europe, you're allowed to have them there. But yeah, they're amazing. Anyway, here's one. So lucky to have one. Before we move on, a special thanks to Into the AM, today's sponsor. I love these shirts, oh my. These shirts, hats, sleeveless, I love this product. Right now, if you go to intotheam.com slash WWR, you can look as cool as me, because I do feel cool wearing these clothes that fit me so perfectly. You can get a discount just by going to intotheam.com slash WWR. For real, if I'm not wearing my own merch, I'm only wearing Into the AM, I go out, I look cool, I feel good, it fits my body, I love Into the AM, and you can get a discount on the same shirt that I'm wearing right now in the description below. Number three, one you'll never see coming, garter snakes. Here's why, hold on, because in places like Ontario where I live, oftentimes there are laws where anything that is uh, gonna be found there in the native range, anything that is native will be illegal. So I can't keep garter snakes that are native to where I live. I can keep red-sided California uh, or San Francisco garter snakes rather, but I can't keep uh, Eastern garter snakes, things that you can find in nature here. And there's a lot of laws like that around the world. We just did a video about how these animals are legal everywhere, unless you have laws like this. So there are a lot of laws like that. So for example, Georgia is another great example where you can't have corn snakes and things like that because you can't have things that are native. So this is the same thing, but garter snakes are legal in more places. And we're not talking just about state laws or country laws, we're talking about bylaws too. And that's what gets you on the big constrictors a lot of the time, like the retics, because although it might not be like Florida where you can't have them in the entire state, maybe you live in Timbuktu municipality and it says no snakes over two meters or no reticulated pythons, something like that. So you have to worry about the bylaws too. And garter snakes, a lot of the times is a provincial state country law or a bylaw saying you can't keep the native species. So that is why that is on the list. Number two, hots, obviously. I mean, freaking obviously, right? Hots meeting uh, venomous snakes. So venomous snakes, uh, it doesn't really matter what it is. If it's a copperhead and it's in your backyard, you can't keep it a lot of the time. Some places you can, right? Or if it's something that's exotic, a squam or eyelash viper or whatever, you can't keep them because, well, I mean, this one I don't agree with. I don't agree with bans on animals, period. However, I do understand in certain circumstances why maybe there would be a licensing system or something like that. I don't agree with registration. Registration leads to confiscation. Now, the reason they're on the list is because they are illegal so many places, including here. I do have a bylaw where I live. There's very few in the city that I live in, but there is one that says no venomous snakes. So this doesn't count for things like, uh, I guess, hogno snakes, like rear fang venomous, but true fixed fanged venomous snakes or front fang venomous snakes those ones are illegal here, and that's why I don't have any, because I would love to have an eyelash viper, because look at them. Like, who wouldn't want one of these? But I can't do that. I'm not going to take one because it's too risky, because I don't do things that are illegal. And also, I would never have a venomous snake unless I had the actual training to keep that venomous snake, because that's silly goose stuff, and I don't really want to die. Even though eyelash vipers can't kill you, the point is I wouldn't want to have a bite, not know what to do, or not how to handle a snake and get bit in the first place, 
That's why I don't have them. But they're illegal in a lot of places. If you do get one, make sure you check your laws. Like you have to check your laws. And number one, we'll, we'll do an honorable mention first because I've done a video similar to this. And you're like, well, where's the Tuataras? Well, Tuataras you can't have anywhere, really. Like with Fiji Band on Iguanas, you can have them in Canada and Europe. Tuataras you can't have in private collections basically anywhere. Basically, it's not a lizard. It's not a snake. It's its own thing from New Zealand. One of the most interesting, li not lizard, but most interesting animals on the entire planet. I can do a whole video about crazy animals like that if you want to, hit the like button if you want to see that, leave a comment. But uh, yeah, those are illegal too. But let's just not talk about those because most people can't have them. So number one, crocodilians. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty normal. There are places where they have almost no laws. We're talking about it'll be like no uh, whales. Like that's a real thing in my bylaw, by the way, where I live. No whales, no bears, uh, and no crocodiles. <laughs> like, like no crocodilians. So you're allowed to keep base, you can keep tigers, but no crocodilians. This is a, a, in a lot of places. So I, I just picked this list based on the most common laws that I see. I know that you might be thinking, well, all those things are legal where I live, and that's great. That's good for you. Don't say it too loud because we don't want more laws. We want less laws. Government, stay out of our freaking business. We can handle it ourselves. However, I do think that maybe there should be a licensing or at least a training program, not licensing, but training. If you're going to get, say, a Nile crocodile, a Cuban crocodile, you ever see those things gallop? Those things are freaking wild. Or even an American alligator, maybe get trained. But either way, doesn't, my opinion doesn't matter, but I'd love to hear yours in the comment section below. Keep it civil. Let me know your opinion on laws, bans, registration, things like that. I'd love to hear it. As always, thanks for hitting like and subscribe. Really appreciate you guys. And please consider becoming a Patreon for as little as $1 a month. These are the people who make the world go round for me. They allow me to put out extra content, right? So I'll put out things that I don't talk about in my collection, the other berms or the retex that I can't, or I guess I'm showing you in this video. They've been on there for a long time. Discounts on merch, a whole bunch of things. You know about my trips before I go. You get sneak peeks, all this stuff for as little as a dollar a month. That's it. Because I do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you on Monday.